Welcome to another edition of ESI Africa Insights. Today, we have the pleasure of speaking with Peter Thompson, who is the MD of Umgeni Water Services. Um, welcome and thank you for, for your time, um, Peter. So to start off with, could you give us a sense of the business development side of what it is that, that Umgeni Water Services does? Okay, good, good afternoon, Eunice. Thank you very much. So Umgeni Water Services is a wholly owned subsidiary of Umgeni Utugela Water Board. And our primary role is really to develop new business opportunities for Mgeni Water, both in South Africa and into Africa. The second uh, primary or strategic objective is a learning academy. Uh, we have the Mgeni Water Learning Academy, and it's what we call a university of practice. So the primary purpose of establishing the academy is related to the death of engineers, especially in municipalities. If we've seen just in the last year the poor reports in terms of blue drop, green drop, and no drop for water losses. Yeah. Uh, and we can see very good correlation why we have this problem. And it's directly related to the lack of engineers in the municipalities. Many of the municipalities don't have any engineers at all. I think we'll only would see engineers in the uh, metros primarily and some of the smaller municipalities. But it's related to retirement. Uh, we've got people who are retiring and there's been poor institutional transfer between the retiring generation. And we've also got a lot of immigration of professionals and also the private sector takes a lot of the professionals. So one of the primary objectives is to train young graduate engineers and get them professional registra registration as professional as PRNG and place them in the municipalities. So we do it both for the municipalities and even the private industry. We have over 60 sites, water and wastewater sites and over 400 engineers and scientists, all of them professional engineers and professional scientists. So they serve as excellent mentors for these young graduates. And they, we not only provide the training for them, but also mentor them. Even after they've left us, we continue with the mentorship mm -hmm. and coaching program there with yeah. them. So that's on the academy side. Um, I just wanted to um, explore a bit more on the academy side, um, just the history of it. How long has it been in existence for um, what kind of requirements are, are, are needed um, and, 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 and things like that. As you mentioned, there's a dearth of engineers in South Africa. So um, that aspect of, of your business is crucial to the development yeah. and, and for service delivery in, 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 yeah. in the country. Okay, so uh, we have been, Mgeni Water Service has been in existence for 23 years, but it concentrated mainly on the uh, public-private partnerships uh, um, for managing and concessions for water and wastewater, especially mm -hmm. in recycling water. The academy side, we've been training professional engineers but for ourselves, but we've now extending it to the rest of the country. So our, we are registered with the South African Qualifications Authority and QCTO, and we're working very closely with the CETAs. So just this week, we actually are starting the recruitment of 500 uh, learners, graduates and engineers as part of the program. And on Tuesday, we actually have formed a partnership with the uh, Office of the Presidency in terms of people uh, and, and women with dis uh, and, pe and people with disabilities, sure. uh, youth, people with disabilities, as well as with the Defense Force. The program's called the South African National Service Institute. What's good about that program, it's actually gonna bring in uh, some discipline into the training coming from the Defense Force. Yeah. So the target there is 100,000. Amgeni Water Services, we've got a target over the next uh, year to build up to 3,000 learners and graduates and and it's and it ranges it's not only yes. the professional the top end because yeah. we also need the plumbing side so we are also doing learnerships and apprenticeships uh, from plumbing mechanical fitting uh, electrical uh, welding so it's all the skills that are needed and the other skill set that we're concentrating on is to be able to get information from the municipalities to the people we don't see complaints about load shedding from ESCOM. We all know when it's coming, yes. but that's because of good communication. Yeah. So we are trying to set up uh, these contact centers and people foot 
soldiers on the ground who can collect data, bring it into con contact centers in mm -hmm. partnership with communication teams yeah. and make sure people know about problems before they come. So if we know we're going to have a problem the next day or mm. two days or there's a break, sometimes breaks sit around for two, three weeks before they repair it because no one's reported it. So that whole communication cycle we're trying to break. And the other big problem, uh, Eunice, is the loss of water. You know, the loss of yeah. water is directly linked to energy and climate change because yeah. we, it, the metros are losing two billion a month. Uh, not a month, two billion a year. Oh. five to 10 million a month that they're losing in water that we've sold to them. And before they can unsell it, it's actually lost due to leakage, breakage, van vandalism. And the less we can pump and need to pump, the less energy we'll consume. So there's a direct correlation to energy and climate change there. And you know, we are using coal-based energy at the yes. for all of that pumping. So that is that is the bigger plan. And as I said, we are looking to expand into Africa as well to provide the similar services. We had an inquiry yesterday from the Botswana Water Utilities, and they want to send some people on an exchange program with us where we can, from a learning point of view. Yeah. So yeah. that's the academy side. And the... Just lastly, you, you, um, you touched on it, um, various points um, in terms of the um, water, energy, food nexus. Um, you know, in, in terms of water and, and uh, water security, just the general assessment of, say, South Africa or Africa or the world, uh, if you'd like to take it that, that, that broadly. Yeah, so in South Africa, we definitely, fortunately, KZN has, has uh, so I would say, more water than the rest of the country on the eastern coast. But the inland and some of the Western Cape, we've seen what the problems are in terms of water scarcity. So it is a big problem. Many of the river systems, including the Mgeni system, but the catchment systems are going to run out of water before 2014, if we continue at the pace that we are. And as we know, the availability of water, the first, the first use of the water is for uh, human uh, sustainability yeah. and food uh, before you start using it for industrial and other purposes. So if we are starting to run into those problems, you can see the knock-on effect on our food, and food is a major economic source for the country, yes. both from an export point of view. And then you also have the quality problem with water as well, especially the Ceres Valley, where if the rivers are getting contaminated with wastewater, that water is yeah. used to irrigate uh, fruit and vegetables. And the European Union has major um, restrictions on the quality of the water you can use yeah. for irrigation, for the packing houses. Mm -hmm. And there have been traces that if you do use contaminated water, it can end up on the surface of some of these fruit and vegetables. So if those what, that water quality is not controlled, which means you must manage your wastewater plants properly. If, if they poorly managed, you're getting contamination of the water sources and the knock-on effect on the, um, especially as I said, just one example. Yes. And we've seen major movement of factories due to shortage of water, mm -hmm. uh, where people are moving complete factories to another catchment, another province, because an unreliability of energy and water. Oh. So they are so closely connected that without the one, uh, you cannot. And we are trying to use waste as well in terms of um, recycling the waste in terms of uh, the circular economy that the waste products from water and wastewater, how do we use them as input uh, elements or input sources for other downstream processes? So using waste in Peter Maritzburg, we have a wastewater plant where we take the waste and irrigate it on land where we grow turf grass. That mm. turf grass is then sold on to the industry. Yes. So these are the examples that you want to actually bring in to get this whole energy, water, food, nexus cycle, uh, the continuum con continuing there. Otherwise, if you break that, we've got a serious problem. Okay, thank you. Thank okay. you, Peter. It's uh, okay. Peter Thompson, the MD of um, Mungeni. Water services, and thank you for watching. Until next time. Mm -hmm.